Hey, I'm Bennett. And I'm Dawn. And this is Living My Alaska, and it is springtime in Alaska. We're going to the big city of Anchorage today to do some shopping. And the boss lady here has a project she has to work on, so that's why we're headed to the big city. We don't do it often, and today we're going to test all of them suspension mods and some of the other things we've done to our fantastic sprinter van in some really nasty weather. We've got gusty winds, we've got snow, we've got icy roads. Perfect day to travel in Alaska. Let's go. This is our new Starlink. A new Starlink Generation 3, Gen 3 Starlink, and this new fancy mount made by Trio Flat Mounts. And this thing looks to be 3D printed. Trio is a small company out of Canada. TrioFlatMounts.com, I believe. I'm really excited about this. This is gonna go on our camper van. So we've got our Starlink, we've got the Trio mount mounted, and we have the connector cable for the Starlink that goes to the router. Yes, it's April, yes, it's snowing, yes, we live in Alaska, and it, winter doesn't wanna give up. But we have a trip planned. If Alaskans waited for great weather, we'd never leave the house. So this is how it's done. So what we're doing is we're going to place this on top of the van with the magnets, and then we'll run this cable. And so these magnets will hold this Starlink in place. The goal is to not have to drill into the van. And what I'm doing is I'm wiping and I'm just cleaning off the spot for the magnets. So I want this to be placed right about here. And as you can hear, wow, that's strong. It's definitely not going anywhere. That's, that's strong in place, it's tight. We're starting to see a trend of these magnets used for lots of things. And because this is in a horizontal position and it'll be mounted behind our air conditioner that's on the roof of the van, we won't have many problems with air catching this thing as we're blasting down the highway. It's not going anywhere. And because it's such a low profile, you won't be able to see this from the ground. And so the next step is to get that cable run what we have to do is we have to run that cable through here. Okay, well let's do it this way. We're gonna try to make this as neat and as professional looking as possible. So I'm gonna run it up through this hole that's in the rear view camera and into my Starlink that I've already mounted. And so this cable connects right in here. And that's it. On a normal situation, it would be at an angle, but with this trio mount, it will be facing straight up into the sky and not at an angle. So if I pop this tab up here, and then pull gently with my fingers, this pops out. Kickstand is gone, and this goes in its place. You can see there's a lip in there, and that goes into the Starlink, and then it clips in here. So what I'm trying to figure out is um, what's the best way to route this cable. Our ultimate goal is to send this cable through here and then into this compartment. What I'm trying to figure out what's the best place if I just run it right here and into this compartment. I'm afraid if I do that, water might pull up behind here and then leak into here. Like I could you know, pull that up and then send it behind there. My best option is to run it over here. But if I do that, then I've got to figure out a way for this cable to be held in there. The easiest option might just be to run it in here. So maybe we'll do that. So let's see if this works. We're gonna have to run all this cable through. This is the hardest part because after this, it just goes into this compartment. And then we go up around and into the rear hatch. Now that it's all the way through, we'll have to see if this actually fits under that rubber seal or not. But I think what we'll do is cut this little rubber seal a little bit right here so it fits around this cable that we're running through here. Otherwise, you're gonna have to figure out how to punch a hole in your roof and run the cable through, and that's a terrible idea. This, I believe, is much better. So we're just kind of figuring this out as we go here. Yeah, it's starting to cooperate. This rubber's cold, so it's not very pliable at the moment. It's a bit of a challenge, but we will figure it out. We've strategically placed this where both doors have a gap where it shuts. So when I shut this... Yeah, it works. Yeah, that works pretty well right there. And there's not a whole lot of pressure on it because it's just this little seal here. It's not metal slamming against where that cord is. Man, that's about as easy and as clean as that cord. Super cool from down here. Nobody can see that Starlink. And so I've got it through there. And so what we have to do now is we're gonna go inside and pull the rest of it through. All right, so that's the end result right there. You see, we've run the cable exactly in line with the gap between the two doors. So that cable's not being smashed by either one of those doors when it closes. Super excited about that. I think it looks great. Let's go inside. So this is where we keep all of our sleeping gear. And what I want to do is I've run the cable into this compartment. As you can see, the cable's here. And then we'll move the extra cable over to the corner. So the Starlink comes with a few other items that we will install into the van. This is the new router. This is the power box. And you have your cables and your power cable. And that's it. It's super simple. And we're going to power it up with this little switch right here. So this goes to the Starlink, next here. So this Starlink router has no lights on it. 
so we don't necessarily know if it's getting power or not. We can't really put all this inside of there because I think this creates a lot of heat. I guess we could try it, we just have to monitor it to see how much heat it creates. A far better option would be to have everything back in this compartment. Oh yeah, it even fits through there, wonderful. This is such a cleaner install like that as opposed to having all that stuff out here. We can test it by Starlink app. And what we're looking for is Starlink router, Wi-Fi router. So it looks like it's powering on Starlink, it's powering on optimizing connection. That's good, that's what we wanna see. And I'm super excited to see how well this works. This is a game changer, folks. For Starlink users, we when we travel in our van, we work, we work out of our van and we use that van extensively for when we travel. We use it when we're off grid for cell phones and for uh, work situations and then we, when we get into cell phone range, we still use this for internet. And so this is going to be an invaluable piece of equipment. We have online service that says Starlink is on the roof. It's being, it's looking up at the sky. We've run the power straight to that little switch where we can shut it on and off when we need it. It's a very nice clean installation. And so we're going to do a speed test and see what we have. Wow, according to this, five minutes after the install on a nasty cloudy day in South Central Alaska, we're getting 270 megabytes per second. That's impressive. What I'm excited about is I won't have to take this on and off the van like we did the old one. The Gen 2 model with the rotating uh, dish, we had to take it on and off the van all the time and I was always worried about something being damaged. And the hassle of taking it on and off meant that um, someone could steal it in the middle of the night. So I know what happens with Starlink as soon as it boots up sometimes that'll give you a false reading because it's, it's not a realistic reading. But on a second try we're getting 140 megabits per second, 135, that's still very impressive and that's plenty to run what we need and then it says 15 14 megabits per second upload thanks to starlink starlink on the roof we've got it set up we've got it powered up and folks it's running we're watching youtube as we speak we're watching of course living my alaska what other channel is there i'm super excited about having this isn't going to be great for you and your work Absolutely. yeah it's going to be good i'm so excited we're going to share more about how the Starlink works in future videos as we're rolling down the highway. We're taking this thing to Denali National Park. Coming up very soon, we're taking it to Fairbanks. We'll probably take it up the Denali Highway again, probably. All points in Alaska, and many of them off the grid and way off the beaten path, and Starlink is coming with us, and we're going to share with you in each one of those spots how it does and how it performs. It's still snowing in Alaska. It's springtime, technically. Almost April 15th, and it's still snowing. It's about 35 degrees outside. You can hear the van running in the background. We're prepping our sprinter van because we're going to the big city of Anchorage, Alaska. It's a rare occasion that we get to go to the big city and do some shopping. Dawn has a project that she's working on for a hospital. That's right, Dawn is a nurse and she is a world-class leader in the healthcare field. And so she's flying out to the little island of Dutch Harbor to do some work out there and help guide that clinic. So we're going to Anchorage today. We're going to spend the night in Anchorage at probably Camp Cabela's. Cabela's lets us park for free in their parking lot overnight. So that's probably where we'll camp. And we're going to endure these conditions. We have, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 mile per hour gust. It's snowing. The roads are going to be absolutely rotten. And we're going to test the limits of the 4x4 Mercedes Sprinter camper van in these conditions. Let's go inside the camper van. We're nice and cozy and warm on our trip to the big city of Anchorage to do some shopping. And um, one of our favorite things to do is stop for sushi in um, Wasilla. What's the place called, honey? Basil Ginger. Basil Ginger. Let's go eat some sushi. Let's go get some food. How is it? Totally delicious. <laughs> Extremely delicious. Was it tasty? <laughs> Are you stuffed? Delicious. Basil Ginger, our favorite sushi place. It's really good. All right, Rob Boss Lady, you ready to go somewhere? Go. Looks like the snow is slowing down. We're going to load up in the van. Head to Anchorage. Stand up. Anchorage, 35 miles. That's good. We're going to do shopping in Anchorage? We're going to do shopping in Anchorage. I love taking trips in this van. It's the most comfortable thing we have to drive. We've had so many good experiences in this van. It brings back memories every time I get into the driver's seat. And the drive into Anchorage from the back country of Alaska is uh, is epic. I mean, it's just gorgeous. If this was anywhere else, it'd be a, well, some kind of a scenic designated highway, but it's just another day in Alaska. And um, it's gonna be a good day. 
Road trips are always somewhat uncommon for us who live in the backcountry of Alaska. So when we get a chance to take the roads and explore this amazing state, we like to take the unexpected detours. On this trip, I'm super excited to share with you what we found. <laughs> We are going on a dog mushing tour with Susitna Sled Dog Adventures in Talkeetna, Alaska. Our friends Roan and Alyssa Boozer are professional dog mushers. They are like racing royalty in this area of Alaska because Roan is a second generation musher. They take us on a tour of the kennels, let us pet the dogs, we then connect the dogs to the winter ready sled and off we go into the wild frozen adventure. If you're ever in Talkeetna area and care to experience this for yourself, then reach out to Roan and Alyssa at Susitna Sled dog adventures i know they will be thrilled to take you on a tour i'll put their website in the link to this video description let's go back to our road trip to the big city from Camp Cabela's. Yes, that's right. We're camping in the Cabela's parking lot in Anchorage, Alaska. It's a popular spot. Cabela's generally, with their permission, gives us RVers permission to camp overnight. We're in a trip to the big city of Anchorage, Alaska from our home in the backwoods of Alaska to do some shopping and on a little bit of business trip for the boss lady. And so we're camping in our Coachman Galleria tonight. And this thing is so luxurious for this kind of stuff. It's fantastic. What do you think? Cozy. It's cozy. Rumple blanket peppermint tea. We've got internet. We're uploading videos right now. We've got a super cool video coming. We've got smart TV, Starlink on the roof. And by the way, we post new videos every Saturday and then short videos throughout the week, usually every other day. Tomorrow we're going to send the boss lady off to do some work and I'm going to miss her, but she'll be back soon. And I'll be back with you very soon too on another living my Alaska. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching as we hunt, we harvest, we homestead, and we adventure our way through the last frontier. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos because we have so much more to share with you as we show you what it means when we say we are living my Alaska. See you next time.